the Koigig Pod on Off the Ball in association with Cadbury, official snack partner of the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Katie McCabe, a huge, huge goal. I'm very proud of the team's performance. We're going to go out there to beat them. We're going to try and beat them. Hello and welcome to the first episode of 2024 of the Koi Gig Podcast. I'm Kathleen McNamee and I am joined by my lovely co-hosts as ever, former Arsenal and Ireland legend Emma Byrne. And we get to call her Captain Karen for another year as she has stayed on with P Mount Karen Duggan. It's the first time we've been back for, since the new year. We had a nice little break off. Hope everyone Happy who year, listens y'all. had a lovely Happy New Year. Um, How are we feeling? Any New Year's resolutions, 2024 aims? I personally hate New Year's resolutions, so I don't even know why I'm asking this, but it feels like a place to start. (laughs) No, I have commitment issues, so no, no New Year's resolutions. Can't can't put that pressure on myself. Oh, I, I don't have any commitment issues. I just refuse to commit. But I have made some resolutions. Going to go to the gym. I'm going to get re really super fit, like super super fit. I bought new gym gear. It all arrived <laughs> on Saturday. Honestly, it's like I'm going to look the the bee's knees in the gym. But I just I'm, I need to go there. And do you are you a fancy gym gone. person or are you like a gym chain person? Like, you, are we paying? No, I'm paying. I'm paying pittance to go to this. You won't go, so <laughs> like people wear Doc Martens in this gym. Like honestly, people pass me in jeans and stuff. Like I don't care. I need to focus on myself. It's actually, it's not a bad gym, but I need to go. I've been once in the new year, and I was, said I was going to go every week, but you know, things happen. Dogs need to be walked and stuff. I'm going tomorrow. We'll hold you to that. I'm going to send you a picture that'll make me go. See, I need to be, I need to be made to do something. Yeah, I need to be shamed into it. <laughs> yeah. Now that Karen has to go back and do pre-season, maybe you can uh, motivate each other and complain yeah. about aching bones and stuff on days other than just whenever we meet up for the podcast. Ah, uh, we could talk about time. aching bones every day, to be honest. Yeah, I don't have to exercise to ache. That's yeah. just my... <laughs> This is my resting state now. <laughs> um, well, speaking of exercise, we might as well chat a little bit about your decision to commit for another year with Piedmont, Karen. You kind of were keeping your cards close to your chest last year. You decided to see how, what happened when the season ended. Obviously, it ended very, very well. And you seem to have got a taste for success. So you're like, yeah, one more year. Let's do it. I know, I'm full of it. I knew I was coming back for another year. But this is the last year. Oh. This is it. <laughs> this is the one more year. Then I, I think I've heard up. this pretty much every year since we've started this podcast. Yeah, so. when we first started the podcast, I was traumatized. And then things have gotten a little bit better since then. So, um, yeah, we'll go one more year with the peas. Well, I suppose the fact that we've got Champions League, like it gives us something to to really look forward to. It's a kind of something different as well. Um I again I think it'll be challenging. I think we maybe played out of our skin a little bit last year and other teams seem to again I thought it was going to be a quiet off season, but there seems to be a, still a little bit of a merry go round going on. Um obviously some teams have a lot more to offer than others and that's fair enough. So yeah, again, hard one to predict, but We'll just focus on getting through preseason, and then we'll evaluate once we get into it. How do you feel about how the team are shaping up ahead of the new season? Is it March it starts? Start of March? Yeah, the President's Cup's first weekend in March, so we'll play against Athlone, because obviously they have that great win in the Cup. Um, yeah, I mean, we've managed to hold on to most... 99% of our squad so um, that's really positive because obviously that's the team that got us over the line last year um, so hopefully we can stick together and, and continue to improve because we will need to improve if we're to, to challenge again this year but it was great to keep everyone I mean that's where we are if we're being honest with the amount it's not that we can attract a huge amount of um, talent compared to other clubs based on what we can offer outside of football. Um so yeah, but you just... can offer you can offer Champions League. 
that is a massive thing. It it should be. It should be, but uh, not for everyone. So mm-hmm. look, we're happy with our squad. We had a really, really great um squad last year, and everyone worked really, really well together. It's really positive energy around the place. We'll have a new coach coming in, so it'll be a fresh voice. And so yeah, it's, I really don't know. You don't know what to expect until you you get into it. To be honest, but yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to. The challenge of the Champions League. Um, the last time we played in it, we played really well and we didn't lay a hand on our opposition. So we know that we need to be a lot better this time, you know, we need to be a lot fitter, we need to be a lot more organised and have a better game plan because realistically we can't go out and play against these teams who've been professional for years and years without parking the bus a little bit and having a bit of a, a game plan there. So uh, I don't think we'll be as naive as we were previously going into it. And so hopefully we can uh, give a good account of ourselves. Hopefully we hold on to all our players and there's no injuries till then because it is it's quite far away. Like you're you're pretty much nearly finished the season by the time that rolls around. Yeah, because we're still kind of at the deciding stage of this season. Like it's still, it's not got to the really interesting part. So still a bit to go for before the Champions League starts up again. In terms of like, you, I remember you saying that last year, you know, you all made the commitment to train that little bit more, go that little bit harder. And that was what you felt was like one of the defining things last year in terms of how your season went. How are, what are the plans to kind of, I suppose, elevate it again this year in the hopes of like getting, doing well in the Champions League, obviously retaining the title, going all the way in the cup as well yeah I think that there were a lot of games that we scraped through through grit and just that little bit of extra training and and stuff got us over the line last year and people maybe underestimated us a bit which they won't do this year so I do think there's scope for us to become better tactically and I'm sure we'll speak about that going into to pre-season and the standard is is getting better you saw in the cup final the way that Athlone, who in a few seasons ago would, I hope they don't mind me saying this, they wouldn't have been as ball playing as they were in that game. And I think they took shells by surprise. I think a lot of teams are getting better technically and tactically. And there's a lot of really good coaches in the league now. So it's up to us to to improve. And I think that's an area we definitely can improve. I think everyone knows that you need to be a certain level of fitness. You need to be committed and all that sort of stuff. But everyone's doing that now. So it's important that we we step up tactically. Mm. And have you started your preseason training yet? We've gotten our, our program. But so we are, <laughs> we're meeting up on Thursday for our uh, fitness test. So that'll be good. I'm really looking forward to it. Fun. Mm. So this might be the last time you ever hear from me because <laughs> <laughs> either way. There are any uh, P-Mount players listening. Obviously, Karen has been working hard since Christmas, every single day in the gym, out running, doing I all myself New Year's Day off. I gave myself New Year's Day off. What was it? Just New Year's Day. I mean, if it's true, I'm that's pretty lying, good. But... <laughs> <I remember>. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did a slot on Off the Ball Breakfast like before Christmas as to what our like sporting aspirations were for 2024 and mine was to walk more so uh, I definitely cannot compete with either Emma going to the gym or you doing a fitness test even the walking hasn't really happened so much just yet um, Emma you were rubbing shoulders last night with some of the best and brightest in football at the FIFA the best awards did you have a good night? Yeah, it was um, it was good seeing lots of. Do you know what I really liked about it? It was very, um, it was promoting women's football a lot. They were celebrating the World Cup this year. I'm not sure if you watched it, but it was very much in support of women's football and women in general, which was nice. It was it was lovely to see. But in general, yeah, it was a good night. Um. Saw lots of old teammates and stuff like that. So a bit nostalgic. Seen lots of opposition as well. We didn't really rub shoulders that much. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's good. Really good. Clean night. I was home Clean early. Night. I was in bed early. So. I'm really disappointed with that. I wanted like yeah, no, I, I wanted more of last year's performance. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Some good gossip out of last <laughs> No, no, no. I uh, I decided to be uh, very professional and also I had to get back to the dogs. I know I keep, I sound like a broken record, but the dogs can't be left on their own. I, I think I just use them as an excuse. They're, they're fantastic for that. Brilliant. Good night. 
no regrets, no pillow dives this morning. So happy days. <laughs> Is there anyone who so grown up you would sure. get starstruck at? You don't really care, do you? No, not really. I mean, no, not really. <laughs> not really. Um, I was a little bit with Serena, I have to say, because I hadn't really, I hadn't met her before. So, you know, when you think you know someone, I do this all the time, like, uh, and these poor people must think they know me, but just can't remember me because I'm like, oh, Serena you know, good luck tonight. And you've been fantastic. And she's like, thank you so much. And how are you? And like, the I was like, fine. And as I walked away, I was like, she doesn't know me, but like, she's so nice. She had to pretend she just couldn't remember me. Um, little bits, not starstruck, but yeah, taken aback a little bit with Serena. She, she does have a presence. And with her and Emma Hayes in the same room, it's like, mm. wow. And they were getting all the attention, which was, it was really cool to see, actually. Mm. And man, putting those two big football brains together, the world would probably explode. Obviously, good news for Serena today as well, getting that contract extension to the next World Cup cycle. So lots of very, very happy England fans, I think. Well, initially, they were worried that she was going to be lured away with the US job, and then there was just general Yeah, concerns. so it's actually congratulations to the FA, isn't it, for securing her, to be quite honest. I think they've done a great job there. Yeah, I'd love to know some of the details around her contract, because I know that was a big talking point just in terms of remuneration and the fact she won the Euros with them, got to the World Cup final, obviously has aspirations to do retain the Euros and hopefully get that World Cup uh, final as well so went in last night went in today also her assistant is staying on as well which a lot of the players said was kind of key to her decision to stay on which I thought was quite interesting as well Um, you mentioned there about the fact that they were celebrating women a lot last night Um, and one of the ones that they announced was that from next year on obviously they're going to have that new award named after Marsha to recognise women's football and specifically goals scored by women which means that now Stephanie Zambra Roach when she was voted uh, for the Puskas that's the highest a woman will ever be rated for a Puskas so she will always have that in her back locker as well uh, so quite a lot of people saying she should have won that year as well which obviously we agree with but I thought that was quite cool it's a pretty cool flex all right isn't it <laughs> yeah just me <laughs> I mean like having a Puskas nomination in your back pocket in general is a cool flex yeah. but uh, I thought that was nice and it's great I always think Marsha in particular gives very good interviews when it comes to you know making sure the generations behind you that the ladder is left down and that there's a hand extended to pull them up so that's good what did you guys think of the world 11 quick reminder to anyone if they haven't seen it so mary erps and goal bronze greenwood carmona i have toon bombashi walsh james and russo and then kerr and morgan an interesting collection voted for by the players uh our very own captain I think for the player of the year anyways, Katie McCabe, she voted for Bon Mashi first, which I think the majority of people did, and then Caitlin Ford second. Um but yeah, an interesting eleven. I think Morgan I, was probably the I find it so interesting that they've they've actually made it public what people voted for. I know that. Like that's I what that. I was most interested in. Mm -hmm. Did you see Monte, mm -hmm. the Spanish manager, three Spanish players? And I understand why they won the World Cup and she is an awesome team, but I don't think I would be able to vote purely for my own team. Like you have to recognize talent from elsewhere, mm -hmm. surely. Like just one. <laughs> just one other player. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I would have voted for Katie when I was captain because I did honestly believe she was one of the best. But I would always, I wouldn't vote for three Irish players. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'd be voting for other players who I thought deserved it. And um, I thought it was fascinating when I looked through who voted for who. I was really interested in that. Um, I I thought, yeah. especially because so many people voted for Bob Maddie, the ones who didn't, those were the ones who really interested me. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I'll send you a, a link afterwards to the doc. <laughs> yeah, it's a good team. I thought Jenny Hermoso should have been in there. I mean, if she's going to be... I mean, I really don't understand it, to be honest. If you're voted for World Player of the Year and then you're not in the World Eleven, I know it's coming from all different votes, but anyway, I think she could have easily been in there. I thought Pariuelo could have had a shout from Spain also. Yeah, because especially because... 
well, if we're looking at it, say international performances, Russo didn't always start, Tune didn't always start. James is amazing, but like had the suspension and stuff throughout the World Cup. So I thought it was interesting that they had such high representation in those positions, and then someone like Hermosa wasn't in, who is mm. You also have like Mappy Leon, who for me is the best central yeah. defender in the world. I know she didn't play in the World Cup, but that was because they were fighting for something bigger. Mm-hmm. You can't discount her for that. So yeah, there's a couple of names I thought I might have seen and didn't see, but there's it's- definitely a World Cup bias to this, as has like most of the awards have been yeah. so far. Um when you look at like the players that are being nominated and just it's the, the same in the men's like- really. Mm. So, uh, oh yeah, no, I think it's it's. In, I always find the ones that are voted for by the players interesting because I think you probably have an expectation that oh, they're players, they they must be watching so much, they'll know better in terms of like tactically and technically who the best players are because they're coming up against them. But then you realize that a lot of players aren't actually probably watching all that much football by some of the people that they nominate for these awards or forget to nominate as well. Yeah, I mean, it is usually who you come up against, but that's the best indication when you play against a player and you're like, I just cannot mark her. Like, or they're just so powerful or she scores every time. Like the the players probably have the best idea. Who do you not want to play against? Well, I don't want to play against Barca. Why? Because they've got Itana Bonmati, they've got Salma Pariuelo, and they've got... Sandra Panos in goal. I'm going to give her a little shout out. Um, so, yeah, it, I think the players have a really good idea. And the coaches. Coaches, mm-hmm. obviously. They're the ones who look into it and all the stats and everything. Yeah, I hate when there's a thing on Twitter and people are like, this is a joke. It's like, it's voted for by the players. It is It is what it is. It's yeah. The, the only thing is some players do get lost in that because, yes, if you're thinking, okay, three players, three players... And then you do think of the big tournaments and there could be a player in there and somebody, oh, yeah, no, she's so good. Like, I wish I'd have voted for her. So, yeah, it's just, it is up to you, though. It's your duty to try and think of all of those players and not just what everyone, like, don't just write three players down. Think about it because it does mean a lot. And now that it's been made public, which is, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, you kind of... I'm not sure everybody knew it was going to be made public. I wonder if they know. <laughs> I love seeing all the fans going like kind of crazy over like who voted for who and the ins and outs of it all. It kind of it adds an extra level of interest to it. Three isn't too bad. I did the Guardian 100 this year and you had to pick your top 40 there. And then when I was at ESPN, I created the like best 50 list. So you had to rank people one to 50. And that's hard because like what's the difference between someone in like 48th and 47th place apart from like a little bit of your fancy it's kind of only when you get to like the top 10 to 20 maybe that you kind of have a clearer idea in your head of where you're putting people but those lower ranked ones are so difficult you have to put it in positions you can't just vote like who's to say i my favorite my the best player for me is going to be a defender but the best player for you would probably be a striker has mm. to go in positions. I mean, there's just best. It's so much clearer as well. Best forwards, best midfields, best defenders. Mm. Yeah, for the men's one, ESPN used to do that. They would rank the top 10 in every position, which again was good, I think, because it was positional, but it was also still really flipping difficult to like think of 10. Even say like... I think Bunny Shaw is a great example, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Bunny Shaw has had an unbelievable season. She's had a great World Cup. Like, she's been there in everything. And she hasn't been mentioned at all. So I think it's a good example. Yeah. Someone else who's probably suffered as well from um, the Federation, her international federation, not treating the team correctly. We saw just over Christmas there that... Um, some of their funding has been removed because of the way that the Federation were treating the women's team. And they'd obviously had quite a lot of support from the Bob Marley Foundation. They're stepping back. So it's a difficult one, as you say. And it's always going to, I mean, looking at that team, that is very much a World Cup Champions League WSL team. It's not really looking any way outside of Europe apart from 
Morgan and Morgan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even Curry you would say kind of more known for WSL than Australia, because obviously she didn't play for a lot of the World Cup. Mm-hmm. If we're looking at this year. There's always question marks, isn't there? Every year we're like, what? How? Where? Why? And That's then- all part of the fun. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, remember, I remember I won an award right <laughs> and one of the journalists I can't even remember as far as a FIFA thing I can't remember it was years ago and one of the journalists was like you know you won that don't you and I was like well obviously because I'm one of the best <laughs> <laughs> and she was like well um, no <laughs> um, because you're on the front cover of the magazine this year and it was around the same time of the vote and I was like oh cheers thanks thanks for telling me that I really appreciate it well I would have taken that as I am the best and the prettiest so, <laughs> double win I'm like cheers great compliment <laughs> Yeah, I back Karen. It's also the most yeah. Emma Byrne response, I think, to anything, which is quite funny. It's like, oh, I just won some FIFA award and I don't really remember what it is. It's probably like a salad door or something. I mean, you ate. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well, we look for that's kind of the end of like the big awards, I think, for the season, isn't it? Most of them have kind of been handed out now, so we can just concentrate on the football. Unless, yeah. Karen, there's any other awards that you need to scoop up after your very successful season? My successful season scooping one personality-based <laughs> award, yeah, that you voted for? Okay. <laughs> I was penalty. one of many people. You a penalty, Karen, didn't you? I, I did, yeah. Oh, that's that's what you need to, to celebrate. <laughs> that you're not going to miss a penalty this season. <laughs> no, I won't, because I won't be taking them. <laughs> so... So coming up, Katie. <laughs> I don't think any of us can handle the the general trauma of Karen having to take another penalty. That was nope. it's too stressful for the entire podcast. I literally, whenever I'm like, oh. I loved it. I was, but I couldn't wait to see her. <laughs> I'll see how I'm feeling. Maybe I'll take. Oh, a you have to do it again. You have to take another one. You have to. You can okay. do it when you're like 6 0 up or something, so that it's not actually. I I know. We didn't get 6 0 up in any game last year, so <laughs> I won't be holding my breath for that. New <laughs> year. Let me, let me have my excitement. <laughs> um, we don't have a team of the week this week. So obviously, there was no FA Cup action, or no, sorry, WSL action. We just had FA Cup action. But Emma Carroll will be back next week because we do have our WSL. So coming up next, we are going to look at the FA Cup, some big wins for the WSL teams, and also the draw, which uh, is not favorable to Arsenal fans. And so that is what we shall be doing next. Right. So FA Cup. I. I feel like this is a bad way of setting up this slot in general to be like, it was a difficult watch in that there was a lot of big results and not some great play, but we're going to do our best to get excited about it. Um, just a quick run through the main kind of WSL teams for anyone who may not have caught the results over the weekend. Manchester United beat Newcastle 5-0. Man City beat Durham 4-0. Arsenal beat Watford 5-1. That was actually quite an interesting juxtaposition because there was a few of the younger Arsenal players that are on loan at Watford coming up against their parent team, which was interesting. Liverpool beat Bristol 1-0. Chelsea beat West Ham 3-1. And then we had Brighton winning 6-0. And then, of course, Everton uh, beating Aston Villa 3-0. 3-0. I think that's all the WSL ones that there was. Um, Karen, you watched Man United or tried to watch Man United? <laughs> I did. Um, they're lucky that it wasn't a WSL game, is all I would say. Um, yeah, it takes a bit of time maybe to to get back into it. They should have been a few goals to the good after the first five minutes, but they weren't clinical, which is something we've kind of been saying about them. Um, and they let Newcastle into the game a little bit and then after that, um, which you know, again, it should it shouldn't be happening um at their level. But then there was there was some good goals and sometimes it is a little bit hard, you know, if you're playing against uh an opposition who don't come out to to come at you, United or better kind of maybe on the counter as well but they got the job done I suppose is all they need to to know um it was interesting I suppose that 
uh, Jay Z was on the right, which Emma you've been speaking about. Um, then they paid Nikita Paris through the middle, which was an unusual one. Um, I was happy to see Garcia get game time. I again would like to see more of her in the second half of the season because I just like the the directness and the just the energy she gives because sometimes it can be a bit pedestrian. Um, and she helps bring tune into the game as well, which is really really important for for Man United. Yeah, just with Luthia, she's she is that player, isn't she? She's an mm-hmm. energy player. Um, and sometimes she, she does really well. Like sometimes some of the stuff she wants to do comes off. A lot of the time it doesn't, but for the energy and, and pushing her team forward, she's really good. Um yeah, I mean, it was a typical FA Cup game. They were never mm-hmm. gonna lose it. I think all the teams look like they looked like they've had a break. Do you know, like yeah. It was it was a nice break and the players were were loving life. I big break, but it is evident then when you watch them come back to yeah. first. And long gone are the days of going back to see your folks that just, you know, for Christmas. They no, go no, no. They off time. to Maldives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like Hawaii. I was like, what? Going on. <laughs> I don't even think I got down to Kilkenny in our mid-season break. You have to go home and see your aunties, your uncle, do all the visiting. It's Christmas time. I can't mm. imagine what my my lot would have done if I'd have said, "I know I haven't seen you since the summer, but actually I'm going on holiday, so I'm not coming home for Christmas." They'd have been like, "No, that's not happening. Get yourself back here." Um, but yeah, the all the teams I think looked a little bit rusty, like a few cobwebs. Everton, good result for Everton that they came out of the blocks because it wasn't a, a weak Aston Villa team. I mean, if you look at it, they had pretty much everyone did. Daly, Leon, Daly, yeah. and St. Nobbs all starting. So it's a good uh, a good uh, confidence boost for, for Everton, definitely. They look, they look like a different team, don't mm-hmm. they? They yeah. look much, much better. Um, Ever- Aston Villa just looked like they did before Christmas, but Ever- mm-hmm. Everton do look a lot, lot better. And I thought, I thought Heather Payne had a great game. I think she's just go continuing to improve. Courtney Brosnan is now at a level where we don't even need to talk about her because it's mm-hmm. consistent, really good performances, which is great. And I thought Benison was very good for the first time. I thought I've looked and thought she's she's doing really well. So yeah, it's just it is that's what football is all about. It's when players seem to hit at the right moments or come together, or reach their peak. And unfortunately for the likes of Bristol and Brighton, um, and Aston Villa, Everton has seemed to hit at the right moment, and they're I think they're just going to kick on from here in the season. Although they have a tough one at the weekend. Away to Arsenal, so. But they are definitely playing better, and like, they're seventh now, and I'd say they'll be looking up instead of down. Yeah, I, mean, I think they can. I think they, they can. Just look solid. They look more mm-hmm. solid. They were giving away silly goals at the start of the season, making silly mistakes. Looked like a team that were just getting to know each other. And now they look like a team that are gelling a little bit. You know, there were a lot of changes in those first three or four games, so. I think it's just a case of of um, them finding the right team and 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 getting to know each other. I think I think they are going to improve, and I think they'll give I think they'll give Arsenal a tough game this weekend. Well, especially as you said that Arsenal are probably in the same boat as some of the other teams, and that little bit rusty coming off the back of a break, and also it's been like a really long year for most of the players. Like with the World Cup, a lot of players didn't really. This is probably close to like the most downtime that they've got since the World Cup because some players went pretty much straight back into pre-season um, well, from the World it. Cup. Yeah, absolutely. They needed it. There, it's, it's difficult though. It's a difficult time two weeks because you can't call them back in earlier because they need the time. Christmas is generally not about giving them time and then uh, working back up to the fitness levels, it's okay, here you have a break, then you're coming back in and we're straight into it. But with the longer break, it's more difficult actually because it's not going straight back into it. They have to build a little bit and it just looked like that. They were still in that building phase, Um, but they did need it. They do need a break, 100%, my God. 
their schedule is crazy this this year last year yeah i think for like chelsea they have something ridiculous for the rest of the season like a game it basically works out the game every three days or something Mm -hmm. between all the different competitions they're still involved in so that's obviously going to be very interesting with injuries as we saw over the preseason we had the news that sam kerr had done her acl um, I think a lot of people were looking at the Chelsea West Ham game at the weekend thinking it was going to be a, a big reunion between her and her fiancé, but obviously that did not happen. Um, I mean, it's such a blow. To, it's obviously such a blow to her after the injury that she had that kept her out for part of the World Cup. And then now to have this as well, Emma Hayes' final season, her contract as well is kind of up in the air because she hasn't signed a new deal with Chelsea. So there's a question mark around that to um yeah um, and disappointing for the league because obviously any chance you get to watch Sam Kerr play is a lot of fun yeah it's a massive loss huge loss for us as spectators but um I mean it's just such a shame that we lose another big player to this injury and it's there's a lot of things to to go into. I know they're doing studies and stuff like that, but it is about the body being tired, about certain moments of your cycle. It's, there's a lot of things to go into it, um, and it is taking its toll on on players. There are players getting injured all the time, and you know it needs to be looked at the scheduling, um, and as you said, one game every three or even four games two games a week is too much it's just too much for the bodies yeah if anyone didn't catch it over christmas um beth mead and viv Miedema did a really interesting documentary on their own acl recovery and they looked at some of the factors that kind of go into why women suffer more of them we also have an episode where we looked at one of the factors um so you can find that wherever you listen to us normally um emma arsenal made a big sign in in the US women's national team defender, Emily Fox. She came over from North Carolina Courage. Obviously knows quite a few of the Arsenal players really well. Lot of Moy, um, Alessia Russo and stuff from when they played together over in the US during college. Good signing for Arsenal? Yeah, I think so. I think a really good sign in for them. She's um She's a little bit different than than what they have. She, she can play left or right. She can play centre too. Like she is very versatile. Um, she's quick. She's tenacious. She's physical. Uh, it's going to take her a, a few weeks to get used to the WSL, like it does. Some most players, it takes a year, but she ha- she does have that um t- tenacity to to play. And she's very quick. She's good at crossing. She's good at shooting. We've seen that against Ireland, didn't we? Um, she's good at coming through the center, and she's she's good at playing on the wing. So, I think she's a very good sign, and I do, and I think she's going to play. Which brings me to the bench. I mean, I just I I really want to know how these players are going to be kept happy because if you yeah. look at their bench, and it's not a bad thing, honestly. I think it's great, and you need a squad like this talking about women and and in sport and football getting injured I think one of the big reasons is because clubs don't have big benches that they can rest players and bring players in and out Um, and it's great that Arsenal have this but for players that are like Monum, Chloe Lacasse, Blackstinius, Codina she hasn't played. Kodina has not played. She needs to be playing. Cooney Cross, still young. You can get away with giving her the, you're still young, you're still learning, but it'll come to a point where she needs to be playing too. And then, of course, you still have Kim Little to come back in. Leah Williamson. Good luck with that. Like, what's going to happen there when everybody... Um, do you think they'll keep them until the summer? No, I don't. I think, no. I think there'll be a couple that'll go before the end of January. Yeah. Mm. Well, there's there's rumors about Frida well, and Monum yeah. wanting to to go, and and I, you don't blame them. You have to be playing football, and um, you can't just be happy to sit in a bench at this you know at this time of your career. It's such a short career. Um, I never understood how players would just be happy to sit in a bench because you're going to be sitting down watching football for the rest of your lives. Like, find somewhere to get minutes. Um, but what team they have at the mm-hmm. moment? Pre- big well, pressure. There is also the 
But if you look at like them last year, towards the end of the season, they were like on their last legs with injuries and stuff. So I'd rather they had an overpacked bench and see how well Ardival can manage it than being in the situation that they were last year. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there is no reason why this team shouldn't be going on to win the league. That's the pressure. There's no more excuses. Zero. Mm. Well, especially the fact they gave Eideval a contract, I still feel like that may not have been the best decision. I just I just feel like there's so much talent in this Arsenal team and it's so obvious that it's not getting properly dug into and used. And maybe it will be different this side of the season, but I just have a funny feeling it will not and also the fact that the for the next round of the FA Cup they were they got Manchester City in the draw so that's like definitely not what they would be looking forward to you know you look Chelsea got Crystal Palace Liverpool got London City Lionesses shout out to Roosh Little John actually she scored at the weekend um Everton got Nottingham Forest Man United got Southampton Tottenham got Charlton like Arsenal and City really got the worst end of that draw when it comes Brighton got Wolves yeah, I mean, it's going to be a great game. It's a shame they're not seeing each other further down the line, like for us, for our sakes. It's great to see them in the the semis and the finals. But um, I actually, I'm really looking forward to this game because, well, of course, everyone wants to win the FA Cup, don't get me wrong, but it is a great indication as well who's going to push on for the for the league, to be quite honest, because it's it is about mind games as well. But um, I mean, I you know I like City. I like the way they play, and I I said at the start of the season I think they're they'll win the league this year. I would love to see Arsenal win it, and I'm saying there's no excuses why they shouldn't win it. So this is going to be a fantastic game. I can't wait. Yeah, be interesting. I've actually seen quite a few people say City will win the league since the Sam Kerr injury uh, there's kind of more people coming around to it so we'll see if you were right sorry can I interrupted you there well, Chelsea were never in for me in the first place that's a big call <laughs> big call Chelsea are in the transition they're they're, they're just it's they're the other transition team. but still top of the table it's the other teams that should be looking at themselves for not winning and not beating them and not winning leagues over the last couple of years. They've messed up. Mm. Karen looks but so that's the, that's the difference is that Chelsea don't mess up. They're consistent. That win speaks. So that's a credit to them and to Emma Hayes and to the fact that she is able to keep a very good, healthy squad happy. Like... They've always we've always said that their bench is kind of strong and um, the whole way throughout the season, and that's kind of been the difference. So, yeah, but do do you ever look at a team and and think they should have won a game? Like they oh, lost no. the game. I'm saying both. Well, United last year and Arsenal have definitely lost the league mm-hmm. more so than Chelsea winning it. If that makes sense, it does. It does. <laughs> this is our new measure for 2024 <laughs> it has to be the same it has to be the same this year like somebody is just go and win it just go and win the league like don't mess up I love like just imagine you ever doing like a motivational speech to Arsenal before like the big city game or one of the other big games and be like just don't lose like <laughs> <laughs> very simple game Football's not difficult. It's very easy. Just don't make any mistakes. My my manager used to say that to me going out of the dressing room. Goalie, don't make any mistakes. And I'd be like, I wasn't going to, but thanks for reminding me. And then I'd be thinking about going onto the pitch. Oh my God, uh, no mistakes, no mistakes. It's the worst thing to think about as a goalkeeper. <laughs> That's also interesting because isn't that what like a lot of the Irish players said that Vera said to them at halftime going out into the, the World Cup was like, don't make mistakes. And I remember we criticised it at the time because we were like, then you have it in your head, especially the Ireland team that was at the time because we always made mistakes like in the five minutes before the halftime or the five minutes afterwards. And then you have someone putting in your head, don't make a mistake. And then of course. Oh, like, it is. You don't want to be... You don't want to be reminded of the bad things. It's like any sport. Don't speak about the good things the last minute just before you go out and perform. (laughs) 
forget the high performance podcast uh, we're going to start our own <laughs> psychoanalysis of what people should or shouldn't be doing um so i mentioned obviously we have wsl back this weekend arsenal are playing everton aston villa leicester that'll be one that both sides will be really wanting to pick up some points in uh chelsea are playing united so karen i'm sure you're buzzing for that one no. full of excitement not at all <laughs> Uh, Brighton have Bristol which is also going to be interesting City up against Liverpool we've seen Liverpool have taken some big scrapes this year could they do it again and throw a bit of interest for the league Emma's shaking her head she doesn't think so West Ham and Spurs um, and just in terms of the league table in case anyone switched off for Christmas and forgot that football existed definitely not me Um, Chelsea obviously are at the top at the moment and then Arsenal and City are three points behind level on points so to Emma's point earlier it's going to be interesting just in terms of them meeting in the FA Cup considering the fact that they are so close together I'm not sure when about they're supposed to play each other again I don't think it's for a while Um, it's like one of the later games of the season or have they played each other twice already I can't even remember. The, the 5th of May, they play, City plays Arsenal on the 5th of May. Yeah, so that's the second last game of the season, which is going to be very interested. Uh, Chelsea have United on the last day of the season, Arsenal have Brighton, and then City have Aston Villa. So you would imagine that fixture is going to be fairly instrumental in who wins the league. We are hoping that Arsenal beat City, but we'll see if that actually matters. Are we? <laughs> you surely as a United fan would rather see Arsenal in than City I like City I like watching City play though yeah that's fair yeah. but it's this, it's the season so it's not like it's a cup game where they're going to get kicked out at that stage I'll accept it for the FA Cup tie I won't accept it for the <laughs> tie <laughs> to bring a bit of balance to proceedings here Mm, ah. we've never been known for balance so I don't really know <laughs> why we would start with <laughs> about three years into the podcast <laughs> although normally it is an Irish bias but uh, it just it adds a bit of interest to proceedings uh, and I suppose we are technically kind of biased towards P-Mount as well because I don't like talking of, of other teams in front of you Karen unless you get upset <laughs> Um. well guys thank you very very much Welcome to 2024. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with us, you can do so on Twitter at the Koi Gig Pod. We are always checking there um, and tweeting little bits and pieces of interesting facts. We will be back with you next Tuesday with all the WSL action. And as I said earlier, Emma Carroll will be back with her team of the week. The Koi Gig Pod on Off the Ball is sponsored by Cabri, official snack partner, Show Republic of Ireland Women's National Team. Thank you all very, very much for listening and we shall see you all again next week. The Koi Gig Pod on Off the Ball in association with Cadbury, official snack partner of the Republic of Ireland Women's National Team.